Hi, everyone. I'm Anthony Laysons, and I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences at uh, the University of Stellenbosch. And thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to uh, share with you what we're all about in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, which is uh, often generally referred to as the humanities. And I want to start off with a, a quote. And, and this is uh, very important in terms of um, how we see ourselves today in a, a world of, of rapid uh, technological change, especially these last 30 years or so. And the quote is, refers to um, uh, the, the fact that we cannot as a faculty stand in isolation or isolate ourselves from the developments in what are called uh, in this quote, the STEM group of sciences. And that refers to science, technology, engineering, and the management uh, sciences as opposed to what is uh, referred to the arts or the humanities, uh, arts and social sciences in the case of our faculty. And what uh, Professor Parker, who is a former vice chancellor of the University of Canberra in Australia is referring to here, is that we need to have a uh, people who have immersed themselves in the humanities, but also have an appreciation for the ethical questions that we need to deal with in uh, the, uh, and that emerge from, uh, if you will, the hard uh, sciences. And I'll, I'll refer to some of the issues that in particular we need to take note of in a moment. So we need to reflect and we need to understand what is happening in our world today. And for that, we need to, we need to be aware of where we've come from um, and, and, and where we're going to. So uh, we need to think, reflect, and, and think out of the box about the kind of solutions and uh, for prop the problems that we're facing in the world uh, today and the challenges that uh, go along with that. So what he's saying is that, yes, we're still specializing. Uh, nobody expects a humanities uh, student to be able to uh, construct a bridge like a civil engineer or to build a circuit um, for a device uh, as a mechanical or an electronical engineer. No, of course, we, 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 we specialize and we, mer we immerse ourselves in our own fields. But we need, there needs to be interdisciplinarity. There needs to be an awareness of, um, of, of what is happening in the sciences. And for that, we, we, we really want our, uh, you, our prospective students, we want to expose you also to, um, uh, to the digital uh, world and uh, also to um, give you an understanding of, uh, of what the ethical issues are around, for instance, uh, this thing, and don't run for the hills, the algorithm, which is uh, a core um, foundation of, of what we know as artificial intelligence. So in our faculty, we want to com combine this uh, understanding with, um, and at the same time, instilling in our students uh, this out-of-the-box uh, thinking, to question, to challenge, to, um, if you will, we want to rock your foundations uh, a little bit. Um, university studies in the humanities is all about uh, being challenged about things which you may have taken for granted, uh, but uh, where we want to bring you into contact with uh, alternative explanations, alternative views, alternative solutions. So that's where the creativity uh, comes in. 
uh, it's very important in today's world of work to be able to collaborate with other people. Unless, of course, you want to become a, a consultant and, and have nothing to do with, uh, uh, with, with teamwork and you're working on your own. But even there, as a consultant, you're going to be you're going to have to meet uh, with the people that employ you, um, and you will you will have to uh, co uh, learn how to collaborate. And also, with in the world we in the world that we live in, everything is connected. You'll be working with people on on other sides of the world from different uh, cultures. So those uh, intercultural skills and interpersonal skills um, in terms of communication are, are very very. Uh, important. So I've referred to artificial intelligence and uh, educating. What we want to do is what you educate. Um, we want you to come and read for a degree. That's a good word. Uh, you read uh, for your degree. You also, these days you watch, uh, and there's a lot of visual stuff. But but reading is is important. And uh, the, the people that uh, that we um, graduate. Uh, from our faculty are people who are sensitive uh, to, to ethical issues, they're sensitive to solutions uh, as far as ethical issues are concerned, they're sensitive to what uh, technology, how it impacts on, um, on, on various places of work, how we govern ourselves, how we do our economics, how, all of that. And in particular, we want to our graduates to, uh, quite frankly, they end up in a, a number of very fascinating and interesting places, but um, particularly in the cultural industries, uh, media, the creative industries, service industry, that's consultancy, doing risk analysis for uh, consultancy companies or even for, for, for banks, um, and also in, in, in the digital industries. And, and, and more and more, if we look at uh, career fairs and we look at uh, uh, what employees are looking for, then, then, then we find these days that often they're looking for humanities graduates, people with the humanities background, but which they then take in and expose to an in-house uh, training program. So this is Humanities, the human interface. The human interface will always remain important, even though I am now addressing you at a distance, uh, uh, so to speak, um, and um, because of the situation we're in, because of the pandemic we're currently experiencing. So, but that human face is is crucial to think about uh, when we look at the, how we govern ourselves. Uh, what are the social movements that uh, have uh, arisen in, in these times? Uh, some of them that are also challenging the status quo. Um, and our identities. We have many identities. And because we're so interconnected, uh, uh, that is the reason why we have shifting uh, identities, uh, political identities. Um, um, we have a gender identity um, we, we have a national identity, and, and that's one that's uh, shifting and, and shaping. We have religious identities, and so on and, and so forth. And they, they are in flux. They're, they're, they're not set in stone. So this is uh, very important for us to focus on. And as you see at the bottom, numeracy, digital skills, uh, computational thinking, and, and data science liter literacy are important. So we don't want to turn you into computer scientists, no, uh, not at all. But we do want to expose you in some in an introductory module to these things, to computa computational thinking, digital literacy, and how to go how to go about with information that that and, and big data uh, sets that you that you find on 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 the web. So that's important for us. So what are the issues uh, today uh, that we that we're confronted with. And, and, I, and I've put a number up here, and they're by no means uh, exhaustive. Um, but we currently, pandemics are, are, are not new. If you look through uh, throughout history, going back uh, to the Spanish flu way back in 1918, I know that date sounds like, you know, you can't wrap your head around it. 
over a century ago. Um, the, the, the Ebola virus, uh, the various uh, SARS um, viruses uh, in, in, in East Asia, and now the, the coronavirus pandemic, it's important to focus on, 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 on the social practices as well of us as humans, which, which, uh, which give uh, an impetus or, or which actually contribute to creating these pandemics and, and these viruses, our own actions. And, and, and right now, what we have to desist from to uh, our, our inaction, if you will, to try and, and, and combat the, um, the, the epidemic that we currently, or the pandemic that we're currently experiencing. Um, and uh, I'll just drop down to vaccination hesitancy. You must have heard a lot about some people that are saying, well, we're not interested in being vaccinated because we fear vaccination. And, and usually fear comes from a lack of knowledge. When there are... Um, significant events that have a huge impact on our lives and if we can't understand them uh, we tend to because of that fear and because we don't understand um, we are very cautious about things like being vaccinated um, you've heard of conspiracy theories that come up to explain this pandemic and, and everything that's behind conspiracy theories these are signs of the times and and, and, and they relate to the fact that we are in a huge crisis mode and then there's anxiety and, and fear so there's all sorts of reasons for why people have hesitancies around vaccination and i mentioned some of them uh, cultural norms um, not enough information disinformation about vaccination uh, and, and and so on uh, climate change you would have heard about climate change a, a huge one it's about adapting it's about changing behavior uh, the United Kingdom leaving the European Union, the implications around that, that was a very nationalist approach to take uh, instead of a, a, um, an approach where you cooperate within an organization with other uh, nations and states. Why did that happen? What, what, what is that a sign of? Democracy, is democracy sustainable the way that we know it? Uh, we've seen what happened in the United States these past uh, uh, months. Um, the very vivid images of the uh, capital, the seat of governance of the United States of America being stormed by a out of control mob. Um, thereafter, the emphasis that was placed by, by the new president of the United States that their democracy is indeed intact and that it will endure. But is that the case? What are the threats to democracy in the world that we live in today? Can we regard it as a system which will always be with us, uh, you know, until infinity? Um, I've referred to artificial intelligence and, and the algorithm. Algorithms are good. Google uses algorithms. Google uses algorithms to bombard you with information about all sorts of things that you know um, that you are interested in because it's a, it, it has, a, a, um, it has a, a system of surveillance by way it, it does that through your mobile devices and so on. What are the ethical issues around that that we should be aware of in, in, in a future world where, where more and more we're being watched from afar? Biotechnology, huge advances in, in medicine. We live longer today. We can replace organs. We can... Uh, Clone, DNA, um, what are the ethical issues uh, around that? In fact, our Department of Philosophy uh, has a, a specific focus on ethics and bio, biotechnology. Um, and, and with that, the need for uh, responsibility when it comes to an accountability citizenship. Uh, is accountability. As a citizen, you, you are accountable to, to the society in, 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 which you, in which you live. We're accountable towards one another. So that's why it's important not to just have STEM, but to have STEAM, right? We add that A to the STEM sciences for arts. Very, very important. Um, I'd like to just uh, share these two articles. You may want to take a note um, and, um, and, and go look them up.
go and Google them. They're very short reads and they speak to you exactly in a very readable manner what I've been uh, uh, talking about uh, till now. And the one is by Richard Lachman in the conversation, STEAM, not STEM, why scientists need arts training. Uh, not actually arts training, I would say an exposure or sensitivity, what's happening in the humanities and the same for us. And then the other one by Heat Moon Cha, uh, global problems need social science in a publication called Nature. So do uh, take some time out there, quick reads um, and, and have a look at, at, at those. Um, I have, I, said to, to you that we are very con confident that our graduates, uh, especially if they've done postgraduate studies, I would encourage all of you to consider postgraduate studies in the humanities once you've completed your BA degree. They really are valued. Um, we're quite confident that our uh, people, our graduates, our alumni um, find gainful employment in a number of interesting um, uh, areas of work, which I've referred to early on. Um, it's important as well to, um, to, to know that we are on this continent. We're in Africa, um, we're in South Africa, we're not in Latin America, we're not in Asia, we're not in Europe, we're not in the United States. So often uh, Descartes once said, I think, therefore I am. Right, the fact that you're able to think actually means that you know that you exist. If you're brain dead because of an accident or something, you're not aware that you exist. So thinking means we exist. But um, I also think from where I am. You know? So my thinking is influenced by my location and the society that I live in and its challenges. So we are very much uh, focused on, on, on the on our continent, uh, uh, the country uh, that we live in. Um, we want to extend our collaboration with uh, other universities in, in Africa. Uh, we already have solid collaboration networks. That's very important. Uh, but we don't want to disconnect, even though we want to be Africa focused and, and, and we want to sensitize our, our academic offering to a need to reflect um, if, you, if, if you will, Africa and even Africanization, we don't want to disconnect ourselves from the global storehouse of knowledge. That would be the wrong path to take. So we're very much connected to knowledge production in the rest of the world and we keep our eye on it, but we're here. And, and, and that's important and that's effect, reflected uh, in, in, in what we offer in our various departments and you'll be hearing uh, from various representatives uh, about what's happening in all of these departments and I'm throwing them all in your face uh, in, 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 a, in a click. Um, a lot of information here on the slide but just to show you how diverse our faculty really is, we were diverse faculty. Um, we have about three areas uh, or clusters within where, where our uh, various uh, departments or disciplines resort in and those are broadly the uh, languages, the social sciences and, and the arts. And I'm not going to run through all of these departments. They range uh, from African languages to general linguistics uh, to history to political science, um, psychology, um, and then to the arts, the performing arts, music, uh, visual arts and design and, and, and drama. And all of these, in terms of the humanities, all of them reflect in what they look at the world that we live in today. Even the arts, uh, visual, the visual arts and design, very important in, in, in media uh, studies and, and, and also in things like web design, um, and, and, and in representing what our world is that we live. The arts are a reflection of life, or is life a reflection of art? Who knows? Um, but all of these subjects have to take cognizance 
of the world that we live in today and engage with that uh, world. Uh, and of course, we live in a country which is a multilingual country. We've also seen um, uh, quite significant advances in the study of language and how our language has changed over the last 20 years or so, also because of technological developments, which have assisted us in the study of uh, languages. So that's just uh, an overview of the whole faculty in a snapshot. We've got three very successful research centers. I've just named them for you at the bottom, the Africa Open Institute, uh, the Center for Research on Science and Technology, um, and then also uh, our uh, uh, center, the acronym RADAR, which is uh, uh, focuses on disaster and risk uh, reduction, uh, a lot to do with climate change uh, as well, because we've seen there's been more and more um, um, uh, significant climate, extreme climate events that we've uh, had to deal with uh, also in this, uh, this country. So what are our priorities as Dean? These are the things that are very important to me and that I want to assure you uh, that we take very seriously one is, of course, excellence. Stellenbosch University and this faculty is known for its excellence in teaching and in research. Uh, it's also my responsibility to ensure that the quality of that is maintained. Um, your success when you, we, you come here is paramount uh, for us. That is a, that is a huge uh, priority. We want you to leave with a bachelor's degree after three years, not five years. So we, we're pulling out all the stops to ensure that that does happen because the transition from school to university is quite significant. It's quite a uh, uh, jumping into cold water, I guess you can call it. But we're assisting you and supporting you to make that transition. Uh, um, so those support services are, are there and you're aware of that challenge. We want to be relevant. That's why, that's what my, uh, my, my talk uh, up to now, what went uh, before was all about relevancy, the issues that we've, we have to take cognizance of and have to know about today. And we need to be adaptive. We can't just be stuck in a rut and, and, and be doing the same thing over and over again because, uh, or focusing on the same things because the, if there's one thing that is a fundamental in life, and that is change. Change, change, change. That's what you'll experience through your lives throughout your whole lives, and that's what the world is all about. It, it's not staying the same, it's changing. And we have to be sustainable in the way we do it, financially sustainable, but also environmentally sustainable. So, humanities are, are crucially important to understand where we come from. If, if we don't know where we come from, if we don't know what's gone ahead in the world, then we can't offer sound explanations for transformation and change that we work that uh, in the world that we, excuse me, the world that we live in today, we can't. So some people think that history and, and, and the world that we live in now, let's say our lifespan is 100 years, if, you know, if we're lucky, uh, more accurately 75 for a man, um, a woman but older, 80, 85, also depending what country you live in. That's a very short period. You may think it's, it's long, but it'll be over before you know it. And I know that sounds like totally crazy, but, but it's true. If we look back at what happened, great significant changes hundreds of years ago in the 19th, 18th, 17th centuries, some of which have had huge impacts on, 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 on science and the way we govern ourselves, one could think that we've reached the peak. We've reached the peak of our civilization we there, and what we have now will never change. And that would be a mistake. If history teaches us anything, it is that we cannot take for granted the world, that the world that we live in today, the way we do economics, democracy, things like that, huge questions. This issue of the pandemic shows us how our world can change overnight, sometimes not for the better. So history is not a kind of a, we progressively get better. We want to, but that's not guaranteed. And we have to understand uh, 
if we don't want to be blindsided on an idle Tuesday afternoon, why that is so. Things can change overnight. Things are not guaranteed. But if we are, if we are equipped to analyze and understand that, we can prevent, we can predict, and we can do something about it. And we have to know where we're going to. And this is what I was referring to uh, earlier on um, uh, in, in, in some of the things that I've shared with you about the importance of being aware of what is happening in, in, in the hard sciences, in computer technology, and being able to work with uh, huge data sets, also in the humanities, which can add great value to our understanding and also predicting and explaining. Finally, the humanities are not to be regarded as a free for all. We've I've, I've used the opposite STEM sciences, I've added an A to make it STEAM. Some people speak about the hard sciences. Some people speak about the soft sciences. So the humanities are the soft sciences. But that doesn't mean that we don't uh, have to meet the requirements of evidence, that we don't have to meet the requirements of solid reasoning, logical reasoning, deductive reasoning. So I end off with this quote by Christopher Hitchens. When you come here, you can have your opinion and we can stand around and we can talk uh, also socially about a host of things, but in the end, when we're contributing to knowledge, you have to provide evidence. You have to be reasoned. You have to argue. If you don't give me the evidence, if you don't argue properly uh, and back it up, uh, then I can dismiss it without giving you any evidence. So that's one of the things that we, you'll also learn here is how to do that, how to present your thoughts, your arguments, and how to present your evidence in a logical and coherent manner for your peers to have a look at. And if it's pretty good, to share with other people in knowledge production. I look forward uh, to hopefully seeing you. I hope this has been useful. Um, you can, uh, uh, you, you'll be going on and, and listening to, to my colleagues. who will be sharing more about uh, the various departments and programs in our faculty. I, um, I'm, I'm looking very much, I'm hoping that we'll see you on campus, hopefully physically, not at a distance. Um, we're not quite there yet as far as the pandemic is concerned, but I do believe that uh, by about the end of this year, beginning of next year, uh, we'll be in a better spot, all going well. Uh, so thank you very much for your attention. It's been my pleasure uh, to uh, share this with you. Bye-bye. Um, and uh, all the best for this year, uh, for this final year of high school. I wish you all the very best. Bye-bye.